Okay, and we are live. This is United Language Room presents reading. Actually, United Language Room presents reading room. Uh, I've got joining me today a former student of mine. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? This is Hello, my name is So. I am a student in political science at Thomasa University. I'm happy to be here. Okay, great. And what are you studying? Uh, I'm sorry, you're studying political science. Okay, and uh, what what career path are you planning on taking with a political science degree? Well, I think I might work in a political area, and after that, I might be on my family business. Okay, that's great. And were you planning on engaging in civil service uh, by running for office at any point in your life? Has that interest you, interested you at all? Yes, that interests me, and and that might be a plan for me later. Okay, well that's great. I hope uh, I hope you learn a lot in your studies, and I know you personally. I know you're a good person, and you, if I were able to vote in Thailand, you would certainly get my vote. Now, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm, you're welcome. Um, now, since I've known you, Oat, you have always been concerned about the Thai economy and because of that you have forwarded a lot of different articles about not just the Thai economy but the global economy as well uh, and we've discussed investment strategies you and I you uh, I, I met you when you were a senior in high school and I was just really impressed with uh, your your awareness about uh, geopolitical situations and I'm flattered. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> your, your your business and and investment acumen. So, uh, Oat has Oat has submitted a link for us to read today. It is comes from the website Thailand Business News. I will have to. I forgot. I forgot to add the the link in the description so I will add that later but uh, let's get on it we're gonna take a look here he's joining us through Facebook Messenger today and we should be you should be able to hear him just fine uh huh so let's uh, let me transition here we're gonna take a look please feel free to read along Oat is very very adept with his English language skills. One of one of the finest students I've ever come across. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'll read the first sentence here, and we will. We're just going to. Uh, oh, so what we're going to do is we're going to read through this uh, one time and rather slowly, and then I'll I'll allow you to to read as well. We'll try not to comment in between the talking points here. I have a bad habit of doing that. So um, that, and then we can hopefully have some more discussion on that uh, after we finish reading the article the first time. So, all right. Uh, all right, so let me get here. We should be getting some viewers eventually. The longer we talk, like I said, the more viewers we'll, get, we'll be able to get. So here we go. Um, I'll read the first sentence here. This is, uh, or I'll read the title. Thai bank forecasts 7.3% GDP contraction in 2020. Siam Commercial Bank's Economic Intelligence Center, EIC, has further revised downward its economic projection for this year to an economic contraction of 7.3%. Please continue, Mr. Oat. The lockdowns triggered by the coronavirus across the globe has led the economic unit of Siam Bank to predict Thailand's economic expansion to be negative 7.3%. The tourist arrivals of this year is expected to shrink by 75% or drop to uh, 9.8 million this year from close to 40 million last year why the value of export in dollar terms is forecast to contract by 10.4% year on year. Okay. Uh, the worst contraction is expected 
to be seen this quarter at 12.1% before narrowing to 9.2% in the third quarter and 6.7% in the fourth. Economic growth shrank 1.8% year on year in the first quarter, the deepest contraction since the flood hit fourth quarter of 2011. And to top of that, the bot is expected to weaken and fluctuate between 31.5 and 32 baht per dollar. The current account will return to surplus at 2.4% of GDP after it hit a deficit in April, EIC said. The MPC is minutes from a meeting on May 20 when it cut the policy rate to a record low of 0.5% state that the country's economy would contract by more than expected this year. Thailand's parliament approved a 1.9 trillion baht or 59.7 billion in US dollar stimulus package. It is the king's own biggest ever cash injection as Southeast Asia's second biggest economy and is expected to contract by 6 to 7 percent in 2020. A local trade association estimates that 6.5 million people will be permanently out of a job by the end of 2020. So far, more than 20 million have registered for a government handout of 5,000 baht, US $150. While many others say they have been left out of the scheme. And I think that finishes the article here. And this was written by Oliver... Long weapon. I don't think that's. I think I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry about that. Wow. So, whew, that is the sky. As we, that's Chicken Little. I would say the sky is falling. That is a bleak, bleak forecast. What is the catastrophe for Thai economy? I believe so. I believe there's no other way to really describe uh, this. They kind. I think, in fact, the title. Of uh, the article forecast 7.3, that is kind of just softening the blow because that's not even the worst of it. Accord, if I if I'm understanding this article, it, is that correct? 7.3 is not. It's just the average. It's not the worst. Yes, I think it will probably be allowed 10 percent of contraction. Mm -hmm. Now let's go. Let's go back and let's take a look at this article a little bit more. Uh, 7.3 percent. Let's look at some of these talking points. Is there anything particular that stuck out to you that really uh, got the the gears in your head spinning around and making you think about you know what actions to take? Yes, I, because due to the lockdown, everyone is affected by this, including my family business too. Because my family business is rely on the openness of the country, so. What I think here is one of the important things that many people neglected is saving your earnings because saving your earnings is a crucial way to get your life through obst obstruct obst obstacles or the many things that will turn your life down. Luckily that my family has saving a lot of money so we could control this but Many people are not lucky as I am. They are suffering. And the, I think the financial liter literacy is important for Thai people and the government need to do much more to teach Thai people to do that. I agree with you on all of those points. Financial literacy is important for everybody to learn. We don't, even in the US where I was educated in public schools, they do not have, at least in California, they do not have many courses to teach financial literacy. In fact, even one of the most basic classes we had, which was called home economics, which taught you basic life skills, has kind of been phased out. So people, many people don't know how to cook or how to fix their toilet if it breaks. They need to call a service to get something simple done. Um, so, and while I agree with the, your point about financial literacy, one of the things I think uh, this coronavirus epidemic has really shown a light on is 
whether it's Thailand or the U.S., is an over-reliance on import and export. You know, I mean, Thailand relies a lot on exports, but they, uh, and, but they do also import a lot of their products from China as well, just like the U.S. Uh, that's a big part of the, Ch of, of the Thai economy. Many things are produced in China come here. Uh, I, th I think reinforcing supply chains domestically and not having an over-reliance on one country's ability to supply them, like China, is going to be essential to to fortifying a country's economy in the future. What, what do you think about that? I do agree with you. We rely too much on some countries to sell our products or buy the other products. Thailand has been exporting countries for many decades since the since Prem Singh Tulanon era. And Thailand is, unfortunately, we, we never actually develop some good product that come from our own innovation. We usually manufacturing for others and we are like the the end of the river that we cannot have the mud have the big profit that we generate to our country. We are over relying too much on import and export and the OEM business. This and the cor after the coronavirus emerged and it exposed the system failure of our country even more. Now, I have another student who I wish, you know, could join us today, but she's actually at work right now, and she works in the export industry. And one of the things we discussed was uh, barriers to trade, uh, and there are domestic and international barriers to trade, but since we're talking about Thailand specifically, uh, what do what in your opinion are some and I'll touch upon this in a moment myself, but what are what are the domestic policies that the government has implemented that are actually creating barriers to trade and, and not buffering against this impending economic crash? I think I I don't know about this area much, but I think the government is kind of helping with with its full potential to help the economy. So I believe they will do every way to help us all. Well, I would have to disagree with you on that point, Mr. Oat, because, and this is just something I'm learning uh, from through the course of my teaching different students in different industries. Um, but I learned, as a matter of fact, that one of the government policies since the coronavirus outbreak is, I shouldn't be saying that, but it's not, it's going to be trouble for you two if I say coronavirus, but oh well. Uh, one, of, one of the policies the government has implemented recently is they have banned, I don't know if that's the correct word to use, but they've made it, uh, impossible to export face masks. That is, uh, oh, to, to oh I remember. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that's all fine and dandy. A country has to protect itself. I'm not worried about that. It doesn't concern me so much. Yes, we are, because we're in a logistical crisis here. Everybody needs to make their own and protect their, their country's citizens. However, one of the, this also includes imported masks. So take, for example, a country, a neighboring country, Vietnam, who is currently able to produce, they've even given away face masks to different countries that, that have needed them. If Thailand were to import face masks from Vietnam, medical grade face masks, businesses that could afford to buy them and resell them and export them to other countries would still not be allowed to. To me, that's hamstringing businesses from being able to generate revenue. I think that's a bad policy. I think if a company, I think, I think if a company is able to procure masks from other sources, they should be allowed to export them out of the country 
to wherever they need to to help generate revenue. I mean, I think it's just overall you're, you're going to create tax revenue that way. You're going to create cash flow, and it's going to it's it, it might be not be great profit for the company, but it's something. Um, I, so I think this policy is really hamstringing the Thai economy in this way. That's my opinion. Yeah. And when do you think the Thai economy will will surface again, like last year? Do you think? How long do you think it takes? That's hard to say. You know, there's not a lot of infrastructure here domestically. It, it's there is an over reliance on the tourism sector. Um, there's a lot. Yes. There's an over reliance on uh, there. On many different industries here, and I think you know there is there there needs to be some decentralization efforts with the economy in terms of uh, of getting the mo getting money to flow outside of you know these mega mega tie corporations like you know you've got Central Group. For example, you've got CP is another good example. I'm not disparaging these companies by any means at all, but Thailand is not taking advantage of its human resources. Everything is concentrated within, you know, these major these mega corporations that are that are owned, and it's not allowing the innovation to really spur. Whether it's with getting better supply chains and production facilities. Um, You know these corporations have to look after their stock holders and their their bottom line. Whereas if you decentralize your, if you were able to free up some of that capital to to younger uh, emerging businesses, you're going to see a lot more innovation. You're going to see them using new tools that are available to to them, whether it's you know using the internet um, or you know bringing in uh in outside investors from from foreigners because you know there there's there's young guys like you that have been able to travel and they've met met different people in through their education you know, there's thai students at harvard there's thai students at, at princeton they've got connections and they can have really use those connections but right now those channels are clogged up because it, because the capital is Vested in these mega corporations and it's kind of centralized it. I mean, there's different groups, but they're, they're it's just not free. The money is not flowing freely enough. Yeah, and speaking of tourist arrival, in this article, they are expect to shrink by seventy seventy five percent or drop to nine point eight million. I think it's gonna be more than that. It's gonna be around eighty or ninety percent. And according to our revenue of a country. Our country is depends on the tourists most most of them. I think this is gonna be like a dead point to our country. All the hotels, all the airport are closed all across the country and to the number that twenty million people have registered for a government handout of five thousand baht according to this article. It's like we are going to doom but If 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 you ask me when will the economy will get back again in the normal state, I think it really depends on the when will the vaccine be invented, because the vaccine will help us to travel again without any failing. But I think it's gonna be later next year or at least in in the at the end of this year, at early. Well, I, I hope so, and I mean, I mean, this is a glaring, glaring weakness in the Thai economy. Is that it is like we've said again and again already. It's over reliant on the tourist industry, and I can tell you from a foreigner's perspective, um, because you know, just from the, you know, the the strength of the Thai bot, it's weakened now in the last couple of days. But who cares? The virus is is here. It's everywhere. It's global. So. Um, even though the 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 bot has has weakened, uh, it is it is still not attractive to 
to foreigners to come here, among other policies that make tourists say, maybe I'll go to Cambodia or I'll go to Indonesia instead. Um, so that that is a that is a that is a that is an issue. What sort of countermeasures? I mean, we're all going to be facing this. I live in Bangkok. You also live in Bangkok. There's ties all over Thailand and foreigners all over Thailand. What sort of countermeasures would you suggest the individual does to combat this contraction and hopefully thrive? Because certainly, when there's contraction, there's going to be opportunity. So, be strong. Find find opportunity in in every way that you could. Like your, all right. My family my family business. We used to um, we we are suppliers to to hotels and many other places across the country. So after the lockdown happens, our purchasing order went to zero. So we thought what we should do about it because. The country is closed, and we depend on that. So my dad came up with the idea. He sells food. A suppliers turn food retailer. We sells food, and we sell many other things that we didn't before. Uh, and I think this is uh, the adaptation that we all need to make, no matter it's a business or individual. And have you have to expand your age to improve yourself and I have seen many people doing the grab ride and panda food mm -hmm. and they earn a lot and speak speaking of the the contraction of our economy my friends and people around me have been going on a more spiritual pathway do you know what I mean they are they are more attracted to, to charms. This is an interesting trends. They are more attracted to charms, and they pray more that they can, can can get through this. They can have more money, and they. I have seen people selling more charms even more, by by. Uh, I don't. I don't want to use the word playing, but they are know what the people feeling like now. What this people faith is going to, and they are doing that. I think we are going into that that direction. And certainly so. I, uh, you reminded me of an article I read several several years ago. Uh, there, they it basically said there is a correlation bet between the economy and attendance at church. So when the economy goes down, the uh, church usually sees a spike in in attendance, and and so people tend to tend to default to their their religious to sort of give them uh, some uh, spiritual strength to to weather the uh, the economy so now as, as per my suggestion I would say to people yes we still need we need to keep the money flowing but we don't need to do the the uh, post 9/11 uh, George Bush administration thing where you know, okay go out shopping and I would you know you, we have to shop we have to buy things but I would recommend uh, you know you mentioned spiritual growth and 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 fortification so that is important but I would also say this is a good time and it's already been mentioned in you know in US circles it's a good time to get back together with your family spend some time and you know my background came from America as a chef, so spend some time cooking your own meals, cooking with your family, doing those home economic practices, which many people have forgotten how to do. Where okay, it's much easier to hire a maid if you can afford a maid to cook and clean for you, but you can have some bonding moments with your family just by cleaning the bathroom together. As dirty as that sounds, you can get to know your. <laughs> you can you know if you. If you, you really can, you really can, you can get to know, like, say, for example, if you're at home with your grandmother and you you help your grandmother clean and you take direction from your grandmother, you will get closer to your grandmother. But at the same time, you're going to understand why your father, because you're going to, she's going to treat you like she treated 
uh, your mother or father, whichever grandmother it is, and you're going to say, oh, okay, now I know why my dad is a little bit crazy like that because this is how he grew up, you know? <laughs> so you'll get, you'll get closer with your grandmother and you'll, you'll understand your father or you'll understand your mother a little bit more. And, so you can, and you'll also be saving money uh, by doing those home economic things. But what, you know, I'm thinking in terms also of something a little more practical. Like you've got a good head on your shoulders about global affairs. Every everybody is contracting right now, so um, it's that's a tough call. I'm even have, I'm struggling to answer this question myself. Right now, I'm converting to my business to online. I do a lot of my work online now as well. What sort of service? Uh, you know, one of the things though, when we talked about financial literacy earlier on in the program. I know from my own investing experience that when there's a contraction, if you have the money, if you're able to, even just a little bit every month, it is a good time to invest. So I would suggest, I'll let you, we don't have to name companies. I know that can be an issue in Thailand, but if there was an industry that you could afford to invest in right now, um, or a type of mutual fund or ETF, for example, what would you recommend during this period of contraction? I will personally invest into a company that is still fundamentally good and will recover after all of this incident. And from uh, me personally... Okay, oh, okay, okay, yeah, keep going, I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. Uh, for me, it's the, um, the company that have a solid business plan, have a solid clients, and they have good financial statement before the COVID-19. I have, I got to look into of them if I want to invest in stock. Or, yeah. Okay, but uh, you know, we don't know. Uh, we, we need to think about this because we, we, we've, we've stated already that financial literacy is a problem that you know people need to be more educated on so that's very good advice for like i understand what i understand what you mean i understand how to go look at the financials but many people that might be viewing they might not understand you know what what makes a company fundamentally good um and and that they're going to recover from this so can you name like a couple of industries that you that would in general be a safe bet and if you if you learned about their stock what who do you think is going to recover from this oh um this is for me personally i I usually don't look at industry. I, I look per stock that I interested in. So if I were to advise you all to where to invest, I will I will look into the set fifty. Set fifty is the top fifty companies in the set in the stock exchange market of Thailand. Mm -hmm. They are the biggest and they are have a very good business plan. A lot of them is a is a good company and they have very good business plan but Due to the lockdown, due to COVID nineteen, their revenue is down. But but that is that is the opportunity you can take to buy them and hold them. Yes. Okay, just to add to that, with my with with, with kind of answer my own question, um, right now, if it were me, I would look towards manufacturing uh, any type of any type of company that has its its hands in medical equipment manufacturing um, not just face masks but uh, especially and especially biotechnology because we are looking for a vaccine these are going to be if you find a company that has good financials I think that's going to be a good winner a good winner um, and it would probably be a buy and hold um, type of scenario but we'll see how the market changes um, as well as uh, that would be uh, petrochemicals as well because they're those are 
those are a big one of the byproducts of of petrochemicals are medical grade polymers and and materials uh, another one to do uh, is is actually you're gonna see you'll probably see maybe we can look this up but uh, latex is made from from uh, high grade rubber so we might actually see a, an increase in in the cost of rubber so which is good for the rubber farmers everywhere what do you think about yes that? Yeah. I agree with you mm -hmm. okay yeah so which is which is good those guys have been hurting for a while but hopefully we'll see hopefully we'll see some good stuff there so um, and you know if you have the ability you know plant some rubber trees I think it, it you know that might be these are kind of you know think of for anybody viewing this video we want them to think of the associations uh, and the implication the implications and the associations so we need you know we need manufacturing we for medical devices and and and, and we need the raw materials to get that so you're going to have to go out on your own and think about what, where you can procure the raw materials and what businesses are going to use it. And that, I think, is going to give you a good strategy on where to place your money or what, you know, if you don't have money, then maybe that is the industry that you want to start working in. So because there's, they're going to have jobs available for you. Or if you're in school right now and you can change your degree path, Maybe that also might be something you should consider. Not saying to do it, but consider um, because you're, you know, this is going to be, this is going to go on for a while. This is going to go on for a while still. So, and that's it. Uh, let's see. Are there any more talking points we should get on? I, I before I do that, uh, we, I haven't had a whole lot of time to engage with the audience. We have had one reaction and one share in the last thirty minutes. Uh, not as much as yesterday. So. That is still great. Thank you, everybody who viewed and everybody who shared. Don't forget to like, comment, engage with us. This is not just this is not just the uh, the me show or the me and Oak show. Uh, this is for everybody. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your questions as we get better with this live streaming and more adept at it. I will remember to pause for the cause and try to engage the viewers. Uh, sorry, I missed you. Whoever shared, let me see, if, I don't even think I can see. No, I can't see who shared it, but thank you so much. When you like the page, when you like the video, all of that engagement increases our reach. The reason we're doing this here, this is because this is free. It's free for you. I, I get classes, people pay to study and practice English with me. That's my bread and butter, but uh, this is my way of giving back. Uh, this is, you know, Oat has been generous enough to join me today and read with me and comment. And I'm glad it. to be here. Yeah, and uh, you know, the best way to, you know, financial literacy, to understanding other people so that we're not having, pro look, my country right now, everybody's seen it on the news, my country is in flames. Uh, we're having protest riots. When I first came to Thailand 10 years ago, it was in 2010, the same time 10 years ago, Thailand was in flames. There were protests, buildings burning. It's a horrible situation. If you can have a discussion, if you can sit down and talk rationally, think of solutions, what is going to be good for you? Because we can't, rel you know, I, I don't, I'm not an anarchist, but Look at the U.S. Look at Thailand ten years ago. Look at Thailand right now. Look at the U.S. ten years ago. It's us, the people. It's people power. It's how we decide we're going to navigate the storm. We have to do it together. We have to live together. Uh, we can't rely on the government to take care of us, no matter what. Uh, we, we always have to be individualistic in this regard. Doesn't mean not to support your government, but. You need to see what's going on. It's like playing football. You need to see what's going on in the field and decide if you're going to go left, if you're going to go right, if you're going to go straight, if you're going to zigzag. It doesn't matter. That's what it's about. Um, so, you know, don't worry about that. 
uh, so much, but that's what, you know, and we're doing this here to help promote, give you, help promote English learning, and hopefully we're helping you with your English um, so that it also opens up more channels for you to learn about other things you're interested in and give you the resources and the tools so that you're able to do what I said and navigate the storm and you know get your ship into a safe harbor all right um, all right let's see if there's any more talking points and again thank you for the viewers thank you for the shares I appreciate it very much you're helping us grow um, okay <clears throat> let's see economic growth shank 1.8 uh, the worst contraction 12.1 percent is what they predict is going to be the the lowest it goes and then getting down to 9.2 percent but what really really got me worried was the unemployment rate 6.5 million people will be permanently out of a job so who knows what is going to happen um with that being said you know there we need i think thailand like you said uh, to the point you said earlier, is Thailand really doesn't produce anything of great value that people want to export. Food is the number one export, but you can get food from a lot of different countries. Uh, I think maybe, who knows, uh, a tech sector of some sort, solar power. I don't know. What do you think about that? Because we, they, they do need to think about future industries. What what? What ideas do you have about future industries for Thailand that would be something to fortify the country's economy and export capabilities? Well, we have to look at our strength. Our country is full of resources, so we can do amazing with, with those resources. And luckily that on the under this reign of the Prayut, he actually do the um, I forget what your EEZ thing. Do you hear about that? Like mm. the EEZ is the e the e new economy that are all around the Chonburi area that is produce innovation products and many high tech thingy like AI, like automatic vehicles and many more like that. We so we are I I can say we are correct path to the high technology pad that will increase our value of products and eventually drive, drive our countries to have more GDP, to have more better quality of life and many more days to come from, from those value that we produce. Okay, that's a great, great addition to the conversation. So there's definitely going to be some growth in the tech sector, I think, if that's the case. Uh, hopefully the government does not hamstring itself again with bad policies. It would be... Yeah, it, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I happen to know, like, I'm from California, I'm from San Francisco Bay Area. If Thailand had some, if, if they were to, if this government or the next government or whichever government comes in, it would be of great benefit to promote the tech sector again, especially with entrepreneurship, you can get the foreign investors. The thing is with the, with the current the current schemes that they've got, the current policies, they're not very attractive, especially to tech investors. You might be able to get some 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 Thai companies started in, in those fields, uh, but without the, the thing is with venture capital in Thailand and, and funding of, of new ventures like this, I think it's still unattractive for local talent. I think the local talent is still going to say, no, I would, I would much rather do it on my own because there has, there's a tendency for, for kleptocracy. I mean, uh, in other words, you know, it's a raw deal. If your venture capitalists in Thailand are, are basically, they're not going to treat the the programmers, the the developers, in a way that's going to benefit them 
uh, as, and so that talent is going to go elsewhere. There, so in that respect, I think there also needs to be more protections for intellectual property, both where it's regarding uh, foreigners that want to come here, and and you know, especially Thai. You like that's that's actually there is a problem with brain drain in this country. And with a 7.3% GDP contraction, the government needs to have policies that stifle the brain drain and taking the talent out of Thailand and going to other countries. Yes. So, well, that's a, that's a lot. That's a lot of food for thought there. But I think uh, 40 minutes we're going in here, and that's it. Uh, we did a good job. Let's uh, go ahead and. We'll go do one more reading of this, and we'll go through it a little more quickly here. And real quick synopsis of the first reading. Oat was doing a little improvisation there. He wasn't reading word for word, but he did a great, fantastic job improvising um, and ad-libbing some of the some of the words in the article. It still made perfect sense, um, and that's fine. We actually do that naturally when we're reading. Um, we skip over words and sometimes we're actually correcting the writer's grammar or making it better, other times not. But let's, uh, let's just give it one more time for the audience, all right, and we'll read it through. Uh, all right, and we'll start with the forecast. Thai Bank forecasts 7.3% GDP contraction in 2020. Thailand's economy could contract as much as 7.3% in 2020, according to Siam Commercials, Commercial Bank's Economic Intelligence Center. So, latest projection. Siam Commercial Bank's Economic Intelligence Center has further revised downward its economic projection for this year to an economic contraction of 7.3%. The lockdown triggered by the coronavirus across the globe have led the Economic Intelligence Center of Siam Commercial Bank EICSCB to predict Thailand's economic expansion to be a negative 7.3%. Tourist arrivals are expected to shrink by 75% or drop to 9.8 million this year from close to 40 million last year, while the value of export in dollar terms is forecast to contract by 10.4% year on year. The worst contraction is expected to be seen this quarter at 12.1% before narrowing to 9.2% in the third quarter and 6.7% in the fourth. Economic growth shrank 1.8% year-on-year in the first quarter, the deepest contraction since the flood hit the fourth quarter of 2011. The bot is expected to weaken and fluctuate between 31.5 and 32 bot per dollar. The current account will return to surplus at 2.4% of GDP after it hit a deficit in April, EIC said. The MPC's minutes from a meeting on May 20th when it cut the policy rate to a record low of 0.5% stated the stated that the country's economy would contract by more than expected this year. Thailand's parliament approved 1.9 trillion baht stimulus package, the kingdom's biggest ever Cash injection of Southeast Asia's second biggest economy is expected to contract by 6 to 7% in 2020. A local trade association estimates that 6.5 million people will be permanently out of a job by the end of the 2020. So far, more than 20 million people have registered for a government handout of 5,000 baht, while many others say they have been left out of the scheme. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, man. I, I got I got that smile on my face, that grin, because I can't Thank believe you. we well I'm for that too, for you being here, but I can't believe I can't believe we forgot to talk about this point here about the rates the policy rate to a record low of 05 percent. Now are they talking about the central bank of Thailand? And what, what is that about? Yes. Yes. So so when the government's borrowing and people are borrowing money, it's at 0.5%. So there, that is 
that is what we call a sign. A sign. So, you know what though? That there's an opportunity there if you can borrow money for from a bank for investment right now. Money's cheap to borrow right now. So if you can do that, if you're secure, that's something you can do. You should consider. It. Um, and again, the stimulus package. These are two talking points we missed, but we're going to do that next time uh, we get together. We'll talk about the interest rate. We'll talk about the efficacy of stimulus packages to the masses, um, good or bad. But again, and yes, I'm so happy you joined me today. Oh, uh, thank you so I'm much. I'm happy too. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Will you come back again? Sure. Okay, great. All right. Well, we're going to end the stream, and I just got to do a quick transition back. Thank you, everybody that joined us today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help us out, help us grow, help us do financial literacy, English literacy, cooking literacy, you name it. We're going to try to do it here for you with United Language Room. And thank you again for joining us. I can't say thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank All right, you. thank you. All right, I'll see, see right. you again. All right, take it easy, buddy, and have a good job with your studying. Focus, focus, focus. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. All right. See you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.